my name is Angelica Cabunlet. I was a San Jose State student from 2012 to 2000. Last year, <laughs> 2015, I graduated in May. I'm a communications major with a minor in public relations. General guidelines, what you need to know versus what you want. Um, basically what you might want compared to what is actually going on in the housing and rental situation. First, uh, besides location, 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 as we all know, that's very important for housing. I think the first thing we need to talk about first is budget because that's the first I mean, numbers and money is the first thing that comes to mind for anybody, whether you be a young adult or a parent. Um, when I think about budget, I separate it uh, between what you want, maybe, and then what your parents or your immediate guardian wants. And then from there, you kind of need to understand like all the other factors, which include maybe the financial aid you'll get, as well as the other assistance you might get. So what you want, oh, I want to go to the expensive, nice hotel dorm, might not be in the budget of maybe what your parents want, which, you know, might be a little bit, uh, might be lesser. So I think uh, the first thing to do for any college age students, college bound students, is to first have that discussion uh, with your parents. I'll, I'll, I'll expect the, the young uh, students to do that first with their parents, have that conversation. I know it might be hard, but have it open, be open-minded. Like set your goals. Um, what is your budget? Um, maybe after finding out if you get financial aid or not, and estimating how much you'll get per semester, uh, then that's when you can have an open discussion like, mom, dad, maybe I might need a little bit more because my financial aid actually doesn't cover $1,000 a month, which I need to pay for da 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 for my dorm, or you know something like that. So budget, I think that's the first thing um, parents and students should talk about. But uh, the way uh, me and my parents did it was that I actually took the time first to go on the campus of San Jose State. Um, I lived in Vallejo, so I was used to urban and hills. When I went to San Jose State, I didn't realize it was just like San Francisco. There's no parking. Um, when I, um, because the school had no parking, uh, I had to adjust myself. If I picked a place to live around the area, would I even have parking? Would my place have a garage or would I have to park on the street? Those are some of the things you need to be a little bit cautious of because those can be added costs. Um, so for me, um, I never dormed myself, but I have an RA uh, cousin who, who told me all this. But yeah, for me, when I, um, apartment, um, I had to pay a separate fee to the city in order for me to park on the street. And that's just here in San Jose. I know it's different in cities too. And what I paid was like maybe $100 for having a two uh, pass where I put it on the windshield of my car. And that's for two cars to come in and out um, on the street anytime, only on the designated street. And it was um, only from like a year to one, whenever the year. And that was required. So those, those could be additional costs. Um, so yeah, get to uh, know your school and how it works. Um, understand maybe the parking and just the, the structure of the map and the layout of your school. And then the third part is uh, know your major and know your experience or what you, your personal needs are. Um, so my major was communications with a minor in public relations. I knew that one, I would need to be in contact with a lot of people. My major requires me to kind of reach out to the community, do a lot of community service. One, I moved from Vallejo, so I didn't really know anybody in this community. So that's why one of the reasons why I picked to uh, apartment was because one, I, as a communications major, as a, a, a person who wants to do a, a, a public servant kind of job in the future, I knew I needed to stay in a location where I can talk to people readily, you know, have contacts around me, meet the community members of the community, and that's why I apartment. Um, if you want to know, I actually lived on Fifth Street, which is five blocks away from campus, so it would be easy for me to just walk on campus, go do my work, and then um, whenever I had like a service site, which would be like going to the um, John Muir schools around here, or um, the um, elementary schools around this area, I would just walk and actually, you know, do my community service that way, and that's one of the reasons why I picked um, living in an apartment. Think about your major ahead of time. Think about what classes that you might expect and what other things you need to do on your resume that uh, might require for you to spend either more time on campus, you know what I mean? So, let, so for international business, maybe you might need to do more community service work. Would that require you to be more readily near the campus, right? 
I know, let me just give an example with my computer programming people. So Andrew here um, is a computer science major. A lot of those uh, majors need time to be on the computer and to program and to work in their groups. So uh, by living closer, he was able to take advantage of living closer because his group mates were like, hey, we need to work on a programming a game. Why we need to, to use the campus. We need to stay over time. We need to keep coding. If he worked, if he lived remotely, he would have to, you know, drive and then, you know, stress out and stuff like that. But because he lived near campus, he was able to focus more on his major, actually, you know, get more work done. So that's why I'm saying maybe get to know what you, you know, your experience as your major and what your major might need. The actual apartment hunting, the safe and secure way. Um, so you can take these this out and we can like break down some of these comments and I'll just give you guys like um, some of my experiences when I actually had to do the apartment hunting um, yeah so we went over this be realistic about what you can afford rent may raise higher than your wages um, during my three uh, years in San Jose State my rent actually went up every year I think there's actually a, like a city ordinance that says renters or people who own property here can do that so be aware of that, that just know it's going to go up every year. We live in California, some, one of the most expensive states in the nation. You know, Silicon Valley, the tech boom, San Francisco, it's just going to keep going up. Um, for my students who are going to an out-of-state college, we can talk more about that later. But for generally, I'll just assume everyone's going to be here in California. So just kind of follow that trend that rent's just going to keep going up. Um, I don't know if there's a city ordinance that like limits how much rent can go up increasingly but i know for me um i paid fifth street um had a underground garage park one car a two bedroom with a kitchen a living room small still small but i could walk around um 1500 um and then the rent went up every 150 every year they would let me know, like the, my landlady would mail me a notice, but 150 a year, that was quite a lot for me. And then split it between three or four roommates. That's still quite a lot. Um, so yeah. Okay, so two, always look in the neighborhood before signing anything. There may be a reason why rent is so cheap. Yes, do your research on the internet. Um, Yelp is a great start. Reddit, maybe, yeah, but... Um, Go to realty sites, you know, those kinds of sites where you can actually see home prices um, and people comments who are actual realtors, that would help. Because they could tell you like, you know, what goes on in that neighborhood. Um, don't just look at your apartment, look at as far as down the street to the next street. Look at as far as you can, it's like, yeah. Never sign anything without reading it first, yes. Um, and to add a note to that, make sure you make a copy of everything, Scantron everything, and make sure each roommate understands the terms and conditions and they have copies too. Because there's a lot of like, I don't wanna say like maybe bad landlords or ladies who might just say, oh, um, you already signed it, you can't do anything about it, or we've already orally agreed, you know, even though you just talked about it, if it's not on paper, you know, who's, who's to say what says, so. Roommates and housemates are great, but you're stuck with them, so make sure you're compatible. I think that really depends if one, your apartment is either a yearly lease or a monthly lease, and get to know what the difference is. A monthly is per month you pay um, your landlady or landlord per month for the, that month you stay. And you can, most of the time, you can leave any time you need to, just let them know ahead. But a yearly lease is where you have to pay, you have to stay there for a year because if you leave any time before then, they are gonna take more money from you. So, yeah. Knowing basic household stuff actually helps you save money. Um, I know in my apartment, uh, the landlady was okay with us changing the light bulbs. I know not in every apartment that's allowed. You can't touch anything in some places, but in my um, apartment, we were able to change the light bulbs. So I noticed that the light bulbs were not the energy saving ones. So I went ahead and changed it and we were able to save what? Maybe like $20 a month? Okay, beware of rental scams. Um, you'll see advertisements out there in the public and you might not know if they're true or not. So always be aware of scams. Um, never email information found on a rental application, your address, social security number, banking information, phone number, email. 
Um, again, that goes back to the whole advice of never sign anything without reading it. Um, some places are, like San Jose State, we, we can check, you know, houses for you, but um, if you maybe go to the laundromat and see a sign there, again, use your common sense and judgment. And then, yeah, you can decorate, but again, personal experience, do not pin anything on the walls unless you can or ask permission to. Some landladies and landlords do not like that because they'll think, like, even if it's a small hole, then I'm going to make you fill it up. And even if it's a small pushpin, oh, no. So just be careful how you decorate. I would say just basic painter's tape, OK? <laughs> I know it sounds a little bit ghetto, but you want to be safe, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and know your tenant rights. Yeah, it's in the library. It's online. Um, good landladies and landlords will give you paperwork that actually says your rights too. But no, make sure you know them before, before you sign for anything. And now we will talk about other housing options outside of apartments. Another option is shared houses. Anything I mentioned about apartments applies also to shared houses. Um, share houses are a little bit different because they are a house. So there's a little bit more you need to th worry about, like locking it up, <laughs> um, whatever the house rules um, that the owner might have, um, and then just the rules of the rooms. I know people who rent out houses, sometimes they don't charge a set full price. They might actually charge per room. Let's say if you get a master bedroom, which is bigger than the kid's bedroom, that tenant could like tell you, oh, the, if you get the master bedroom, it's actually $200 more than the regular room because it's bigger and you get your own bathroom, right? So uh, make sure you, you clarify and you, you, you understand that maybe um, the differences between that. 